everybody so the weather has gone cold again so over a week ago i was walking around manchester in a short sleeve top and people were sitting outside having a drink having some food and lapping up the sunshine now past week it's gone down to even two degrees c so cold so we're looking forward to some warming food this is why i have got a nice sweatshirt on by the way bargain three pound from a little charity shop in Chalton really really good we had visited other charity shops while we were there and I've got to say those big chain charity shops are getting expensive anybody else found this yeah I looked for another sweatshirt in there they wanted 15 pounds went a few doors down lovely little local charity shop like I say three pounds absolute bargain anyway today's video Lord Walton Pye. So during the 1940s, Lord Walton was the head of the Ministry of Food and he was encouraging people to not eat as much meat, which is great for us because obviously we were vegetarian. And this pie is named after him. And basically it's like a root vegetable pie and you use a mashed potato pastry as the topping. Now, most of the vegetables used were potatoes, turnips, parsnips, uh, some cauliflower, I believe, was used. It was basically what you had in. So in ours today, we are going to put in potatoes. I have some carrots, mushrooms, because I always have mushrooms. And I think, we, yes, we've got some cauliflower and we're going to put that all together. So let's get it on. So what I've got here is some cauliflower. This was grown in our garden last year. This is our last part of our last bag of cauliflower that we froze. And the recipe calls for about 200 grams of each of your vegetables. And that is meant to be enough to serve um, two to three people because we're not making a massive one. So I'm going for the cauliflower. I've got some carrot batons that I got out of one of my um, veg boxes that I'm just gonna dice up. I've got potatoes, I'm going to leave the skins on. It also recommends using some spring onion, but I haven't got any, but I've got this little bit of red onion left, so I'm going to include that. And also in a pan, I've fried off some mushrooms and we are going to put those in. So here's everything chopped up. Um, the cauliflower is still a little bit frozen. What I've done is I've trimmed off the harder stalks. These I'm just going to put with the little end of onion into our stock box in the freezer so all the plan is now is all this is going to go into the pan with our mushrooms and then we're going to add a couple of extra other ingredients risky ingredient for some it says to put in one teaspoon of yeast extract aka marmite i greased my spoon beforehand so that it comes off a bit easier i'm going to probably go slightly under because chris does not like marmite but we're not going to tell him it's in it until after he has had it but that's just going to be like your seasonings in <laughs> even though i've greased it it's still not coming off that well right there we go sticky stuff just wash my fingers so next what goes in is some oats this will be a thickener I'm going to go for a tablespoon of oats and then we're just going to top it off with some boiling water just to just about cover it and then we're going to cook this until the vegetables are cooked and the sauce the water has a lot of it has evaporated and you've got a bit of a, a sauce it says at the bottom of the pan so while our vegetables are coming to the boil and then going on to a simmer, I'm going to make the pastry. Now the pastry is four ounces of flour. It says wholemeal, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to use what I've got. So it's just plain flour. A teaspoon of baking powder is in there. And in the bowl, we've got one and a half ounces of margarine. You can use any other kind of um, solid fat. So if you wanted to, you could use lard. Also, I have got a pinch of salt in here. So we're just gonna dump that in and we are gonna rub it in with our fingers. Okay. You wanna create a breadcrumb texture from this. 
Okay, now we've got our little bread crummy texture. We are going to add in two ounces of mashed potato. Now, I did not just make this paltry little amount of mash um, for this recipe. I made a vast quantity of mash. I will show you. Yeah, I made loads. Because there's no point having the hob on if you're not going to cook a significant amount. So this will just go into the freezer for another day. So, in goes our mash. So I've never made a mashed potato pastry before. I'm assuming it goes into a normal rollable pastry and the moisture from the mash is what helps it all stick together. Once you've done this, it does recommend that you put it in the fridge for about an hour. Uh, wrap it in some um, cling film, I probably would, so it doesn't dry out. So while this finishes off in the fridge, there you go, pretty much all together. I would say if you're finding it's not coming together completely, just add a tiny, tiny drop of water to it. Obviously, very cold water is the best thing for any kind of pastry, but pretty much there you go. So here's all that leftover mash. I put it in a Ziploc bag, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this before I freeze it. Because I know that that is enough for me and Chris and me and Chris for two different portions. And if I left it all together in one big lump, it would be a pain to split. So just a quick handy thing to do. I do this with other vegetables as well. If I've got um, grated um, courgette or carrots or any other vegetables, I try and mush it and create portions so that it's easier to take out when you want to use it. Okay, we need to talk about this. So this has been on now for about 45 minutes and the amount of liquid that is still left, it's only just now starting to become thicker and more saucy. I would change what this says. So originally it said, um, 15, bring to a boil, simmer 15 minutes till your veggies cooked and most of your liquid has disappeared. I'm suggesting what you do is either use a lot less liquid, pop a lid on so the steam helps to cook your vegetables, then take the lid off near the end so that the excess liquid can evaporate. Alternatively, if you want to do with the increased liquid and cover, go for an extra tablespoon of oats, which is what I've done. And maybe even, I don't know, I think maybe add a third tablespoon to create that thicker sauce or possibly use a touch of a cornflour slurry near the end just to give that thickened um, sauce. I've turned this off now and it says leave to cool. So I'm going to take it out of this container because this will retain the heat, something shocking. I'm going to put it into my frying pan so that the... Oops, sorry for the noise. Because the surface area is bigger and it will be easier for it to cool down. Oh, you are steaming up. So we're going to leave that to cool. Okay, once this is cooled, I am going to then make the pie, put the pastry on, and that'll be going in the oven along with a load of other stuff. Um, I will show what the pie looks like before we pop it in the oven. In the meantime, while this cools, I'm going to go and take the dogs for a walk. Now that all those um, vegetables are nice and cool, I have topped them with some parsley. I'm also going to put a sprinkle of salt and a crack of pepper on there as well, just to make it a little bit more flavourful. And then I'm going to top it with the pastry. So the pastry looks like it's come out quite nice. Let me just move that out of the way. This pastry has been in the fridge or while this has been cooling down and I'm just going to roll this out and top it and we'll see how it looks. Isn't 
it's quite a forgiving pastry this if it starts to come apart it goes together quite easily so there we go a la rustic couple of holes in the top i'm going to brush this with a little bit of milk and as with most pies i'm going to put this on a baking tray just in case of leakage so as you know whenever i cook anything in the oven not just on the pie so we've got a bread and we've got our banana bread these recipes are already um, been posted online have a look i will post some links for you at the end so you can find them oh yeah um traditional thing as soon as the bread comes out of the oven you have to have a hot slice absolutely yummy so here's the pie fresh out of the oven we're going to dig in now uh, we did have a little bit of spillage so always wise to put a tray underneath let's get in there this is oh it smells really nice oh yes that is looking really really good super super steamy so i'll just pop that in there and let's get a spoon and have a little taste i don't know why i just picked up the smallest spoon i could find let's go for this Ready? It's going to be hot. Oh, there. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. Let's try some pastry. Mmm. I've never had mashing with my pastry before. That's really, really nice. Now, Back down to this, because I'm going to show you what we in the north, particularly Manchester, we don't do runny gravy. We do a nice, thick gravy with that. Sticks to your ribs. This is a vegetarian gravy, but obviously if you want to put your meat gravy in there, go for it. Let's see how this is. This is going to be super hot again. Okay. Happy dance. Mm. Okay, so this is really, really good. Highly recommended. 1940s Lord Walton pie. Really good. Have any of you ever made it before? Let me know in the comments below. And I will continue making these 1940s recipes because they seem to be really popular. Um, have you tried any other 1940s recipes that you think I would like? Um, um, post them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to continue eating this. I'll see you next time.